Hey everybody, this is Jimmy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's episode is being brought to you by our sponsor, Humor for Humanity, a social enterprise that I founded a few years ago that raises spirits, funds, and awareness for nonprofits, charities, and social causes. Our mission is your mission, Humor for Humanity. You can find out more information at jimmytingle.com. Thank you so much and enjoy today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's show. You're not going to believe who we have today, ladies and gentlemen. Drum roll, please. Paula Poundstone is known for her smart, observational humor and spontaneous wit that has become the stuff of legend. Check this out. Time Magazine, in the March 2020 Best of Issue, listed Paula's HBO special, Cats, Cops, and Stuff, as one of the five funniest stand-up specials ever. What a credit. What a tribute. Paula can be heard weekly as the host of her comedy podcast, Nobody Listens to Paula Poundstone, and as a regular panelist on NPR's comedy news quiz, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. I listen all the time. And so many people have told me how funny Paula is on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. If you've never heard her, ladies and gentlemen, you got to check her out every time she's on. But it's a great show anyway. All the guests are funny. But like I said, I'm a little biased. Paula's my favorite. Paula's second book, I love the title of this, The Totally Unscientific Study of the Search for Human Happiness, was one of eight semifinalists in the Thurber Prize for American Humor, the highest recognition of the art of humor writing in the United States. And the audiobook version was one of five finalists for the audiobook of the year on the Audi Awards. She's been a groundbreaker. I knew this since she started in Boston in 1979. Paula was the first female comic to perform at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. She was the first female stand-up in its fifth year to win the Ace Award for Best Comedy Special on Cable Television. And she is recognized in innumerable lists, ladies and gentlemen, documentaries and literary compendiums, noting influential stand-up comics of our time. This is another great thing. You can actually email her questions. Suppose you have a comment. Suppose you say, geez, I saw her on Tingle Show. Is there a chance she could take over Tingle Show? Can we get rid of Tingle and just have Paula? Yes, you might be able to do that. You can email her for the answer at paula at paulapoundstone.com. And you can listen to her podcast every week. The podcast, nobody listens to Paula Poundstone at paulapoundstone.com or wherever you get your podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Again, drum roll, please. Please welcome the one, the only, my friend and your friend, Paula Poundstone. Pound love, how are you? Hey, Tingles, so good to see you. It's great to see you as well. Thanks so much for being here today. I got to tell you, Paula, you've been, you're, you're a road warrior. You work all over the world. And we have been just locked down for the last two years. We're coming out of it in bits and pieces, but... Are you getting dates again? Are you traveling? Are you working the road again? I'm just about to start. You know, I was I was home for 15 months. And then last June, I started up again. And I thought I was coming home for two weeks in December. And, uh, and of course, you, you know, the right. virus spiked again. Uh, right. I believe uh, the Omicron. And um, I'm trying to collect them all. And uh, uh, so I've been home. So I've been home since then. Have and, you gotten uh, the virus yet? No, I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I think it knows my name. Yeah, I do think it's coming for me, but I have not. Although, you know, I have terrible allergies. So it always seem like there's something wrong with me, but there isn't. Um, right. It's, the truth well, is no one, no one wanted to sit near me even before the virus. <laughs> I have a friend. I can't believe the people who won't take the vaccine. And I, I I understand it's a free country, but I have a friend who's a recovering heroin addict. He won't take the vaccine. I said, yeah. why won't you take the vaccine? His exact words were, you don't know what's in it. I yeah. said, you've been buying illegal drugs on the streets <laughs> of America for 15 years. What do you think? That was approved by the CDC? What do you think? There's a picture of the Surgeon General on the bag? <laughs> This is good shit. <laughs> I've had the exact same experience, which I have two friends. They live in Michigan uh, and uh, they were um, they were meth addicts. Um, and uh, 
I I said to them over the phone. I mean, they're they're clean now. Yeah. But I said to them over the phone a, a while ago. I go, "Are you guys vaccinated?" And they go, "We don't want to put into our bodies." I like, uh, okay, I. <laughs> I, I didn't even respond because it's beyond response. You know, there's somebody very, very close to me that um, I, I don't know that he's an anti-vaxxer, but he's anti this fax. And he said to me, uh, and it was shocking because I didn't think I knew anybody this stupid, but he actually said to me um, when I was talking to him about it, he said, well, you know, you get magnetized. And, you know, that's so jarring. I don't, you know, I've met, you know, he said he saw online videos of people after they had the vaccine that they could stick their keys to their forehead. <laughs> he says he saw it online. No, that was a thing a little while ago. That's what the anti-vaxxers were saying. And this person bought this hook, line, and sink. And, uh, you know, oh. I, I realized later, like I used the wrong tact with him because I just kept pushing on the door. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, what I should have said is, um, well, isn't that great? I should, have, <laughs> I should have said, you know, how many times, how much time have you wasted in your life looking for your keys? Wouldn't it be great if you could just step out of the car and smack them right up on your forehead <laughs> and you're all set? Right. Uh, but I didn't. I just took the arguing tact. Well, what about the people who are like, refusing to wear the masks on the plane and like the, the antagonism with traveling and, you know, well, it just seems like, you know what I really think we need, Paula? I think, and I can't believe Biden hasn't done this, but I just think we need a massive marketing campaign using athletes, using, you know, trusted figures for different areas yeah. of our society, different elements. Like you get the sports guy. You don't need all the NFL. You just need a couple of stars to get on with Biden or get on by themselves and say, do yourself a family, do yourself a favor, do your family a favor, get vaxxed, you know? And yeah. and then you do it the same thing with the Republican governors. You know, they've all been vaxxed and they could that could be a great bipartisan effort to get every more people vaccinated in the country if you would use the bully pulpit of the White House and just meeting with those people on camera and Ted Cruz and telling people in Texas, I got vaxxed. You know, it's your choice, but I highly recommend it. I just think it would help with different different people who are trusted in their own communities. Yeah, I do, too. Although maybe the overall, the nation's overall intelligence level may have declined so much that it, 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 that they might, it might be more effective if cartoon characters talk to people about it. <laughs> Iron Man or something like it, 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 somebody oh, from the Marvel universe. Like, fine. I yeah. think that's a brilliant idea. I really yeah. do get, get cartoon characters to, to do it. Yeah. That would be yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, I think we're I think we're there. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I I am this Saturday starting back uh, on the road, and we'll see how many. Like some of the jobs had already been moved uh, forward. Um, uh, you know, to I don't even know when. Some of them are already moved to 2023. But yeah. um, uh, anyways, I'm starting in June. But you know, my experience. Um, my experience when I last started up again, travel is entirely different. And uh, it's, I'm saying this because of something you just said, yeah. uh, which is, uh, you know, the FAA now has a rule that there has to be two assholes on every flight. <laughs> and uh, I, I was on a flight one time and we only had one asshole. And so they said, uh, we need volunteers. <laughs> and uh you know, I raised my hand and I said, uh, you know, I won't put my seat back forward no matter what you say. And they said, thank you. And then we took off. <laughs> just have to be beautiful. You did yeah. your job. Yeah. I just, I want to help out. That's the thing about me. I well, want to help here's out. Here's the other thing, Paula. I mean, if we would to treat this again in a national messaging manner, like after 9 11, okay. We have we, we have some new rules for flying now. Everybody takes off their shoes. It's like a new thing we're doing. And everybody at the time basically took off their shoes. 
It, yeah. It's that type of messaging, I think, that's just sorely lacking. Um, and it's unfortunate. I hope I hope Biden can get some good advisors around him who can just talk, you know, common sense and, uh, you know, t- what what's going to resonate with the average person and keep the politics out of it. Just get people, you know, regular but people. I don't think you, you know, it's already the, the for the people, the people for whom it is a political issue have already glommed on to it. It's like, um, you, you know, it's like black mold in your house. Mm. It's, it's, it's beyond the surface. It, you, you know, it's up in the, it's up in the attic now. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you can unpoliticize it because people think of it as part of their right wing uniform, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, and they, they, they don't even think about whether scientifically it's accurate or not. That that's besides the point to them. Um, I was listening to somebody the other day say that they thought that that the right wingers are so interested in owning the libs, um, like just like setting people off, that they would actually die for that. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not sure that's inaccurate. Right. Have you worked in any of the state? Like, have you worked down in Florida or any of the states yes. that are much more lax? With yes. It? Uh, how do you feel and what's the vibe? Well, I, I uh, yeah, back in the spring summer, I did a few jobs in Florida. And I remember, I forget which city it was exactly, but I flew in and I had a town car service pick me up at the airport and take me to the hotel. And um, the driver, uh, as soon as I get in the car, he says, uh, do you need me to wear this mask? <laughs> and the thing is, we're in an enclosed car. Um, and so, I, I, but I was so irked by it. I, I'm not going to tell a grown man what to do. Yeah. And so I just said, you know, I had my mask on, but I said, you do whatever you want. And then he kind of chuckled. Maybe he sensed that I wasn't all that happy. And he kind of chuckled and he said, uh, well, we're kind of spoiled here in Florida. And I said, <laughs> then, I, then I couldn't keep my thoughts to myself. I said, sir, you have dead people. That's, that's not spoiled. You know, that's like, you know, that's like if you went to your friend's house when you were a kid and, and they live on a busy street and the kid says, my mom lets us play in the street. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not a privilege. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, well, it it is pretty amazing that we. I mean, it's like the downside of freedom on a certain sense, in a certain way that you can't get everybody in the country on the same page to agree on something that is uh, for our own good. It just yeah. seems so counterproductive and. It, it is counterproductive, it, but we're in a different place. You know, who did I hear the other day say something about, oh, oh, I was listening to maybe a podcast, actually, and they were having a conversation about how, well, now that Trump's not president anymore, um, well, they were talking about how Biden keeps getting such terrible press. And I think that's true. I think there's a real, uh, there's some very strange bias um, and somebody said, well, that's because they're judging him on normal president standards now. You know, like, mm-hmm. they said, you know, historically, we've got we're going back to a normal time. And I thought, but we're not we're not anywhere near a normal time. This guy, this poor president has faced historic um, abnormalities. Yeah. It's not remotely the same as how it used to be. And, you know, all this, again, the very fact, like you just said, that we're dealing with something where it would keep people alive to get vaccinations. And they're still saying, no, that's new. (laughs) That is new. And the other thing is, another simple messaging tactic or approach is, listen, everybody wants to get back to the economy being normal so we can go out to shows, so we can go out to theaters, so we can go out to games and kids ballet and everything that people want to do. 
The way to do that is to get 100%, as close as 100% of vaccination that we can. And just taking that economic approach with businesses and, again, the messaging to the general population, I think it's – and it got to come from, you know, the – the, the people who make uh, whatever, the, it doesn't matter what industry it is. I think that would be a, a big help. No, you know what? You know what industry is good at selling stuff even when it makes no sense? <laughs> uh, I can say this as a comic who came up in the 80s. Um, I am often accused, and rightly so, of having worn big, huge shoulder pads in the 80s. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not proud of that. But um, the fashion industry, I mean, I look back on it now. I remember at one point I was sort of cleaning out my closet and I just couldn't believe what was in there. And uh, and I thought, you know, I don't know why that seemed like a good idea at the time. I I think it made my head look smaller. Um, I think it was supposed to make your way. It was supposed to be like some sort of optical illusion to make your waist look smaller, I think was the goal. I, I didn't achieve the goal. But my point being, the fashion industry convinces you that you need stuff like you could already have stuff like I have a red sweater that I wear, you know, pretty much through the month of December every day and and, and maybe into January every day, every year for many years. Yeah. And I don't need another sweater. I have that sweater. But the fashion industry tells me I need more than one sweater. I've got to I'm, they tell me that I'm supposed to wear a different sweater on another day. Right. Which doesn't make any sense. I don't need another sweater. But the fashion industry tells you if you don't have another sweater, man, you are not looking good. <laughs> so what if we put it in the hands of the fashion industry and they just tell us point blank, the lower part of your face is unattractive. <laughs> right? Just, you know. <laughs> From here down, and men in particular, your noses, because that's one thing you see a lot at the airport is the nose peepers. Yeah. The people who bother putting it over their mouth, but don't put it over their nose. And yeah. by the way, when you get tested, where do they stick the swab? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I think the fashion industry would do a great job with this. Yeah. You know who else would be helpful is they could sell anything is the tobacco industry. They convinced people to inhale smoke, <laughs> to yeah. inhale smoke. They convinced us to inhale smoke yeah. that will ultimately hurt us and can kill you. If they can convince us to inhale smoke that could kill you, they could possibly in yeah. encourage us to take a jab in the arm that could save your life. Yeah. Or the, for that matter, it's so long as we're going there, the fossil fuel industry. <laughs> Just got to have it. You just right. got to, you know, yes, but it's going to end the earth. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> right. Don't you want to go for a drive before the earth ends? Of course you do. <laughs> oh, you know what else? The alcohol industry. If we can figure the, drink the vaccine. Yeah. Put the vaccine. <laughs> yeah. Shots. Put it in a, a, a Budweiser. If we or can get jello like a shots. You could do <laughs> jello shots of vaccine. There's a good idea. Yes. There's lots of innovative things I think we can do, but it comes down to marketing. It comes down to creativity. It comes down to innovation. And you got to think outside the box like you and I, Paula, think. We yeah, think outside yeah. the box. I feel like we've solved so much. Why aren't we in the Oval Office having this discussion right now? <laughs> because we're on Zoom. On the Tingle podcast. <laughs> this is the Jimmy Tingle show. You know, this has always been my dream, Paula, to have my own show. Finally, the pandemic has allowed me to have my own show. Yeah. That, I wouldn't be surprised if you weren't behind the whole pandemic. <laughs> All to make this dream happen. Right. Right. Well, you know, Dr. Fauci is, for, I think he went to Holy Cross out here in Massachusetts. Did he? And, and as a Massachusetts native, Paula, any idea when you'll be coming back this way? I saw on your website today you'll be you'll be in Maine in May, Maine, New Hampshire, if those dates hold up, right? Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah. And um, I was watching. I, I like your... to do the dicier states. Like that's why some of the first states I went back to in the spring and summer, I went to Florida and Texas, and people kept saying, well, why would you go there? And I said, because I want to see them before they die. <laughs> so I like to do the more endangered states. 
<laughs> right. Those are the only states that'll let you actually perform. Now, no, I, no, so no, I performed all over have until you? until yeah until December. I had a, in fact, I the, the last job I did was in in Boston on uh, on December twentieth. Had a great time, folks. On her website, paulapoundstone.com, not only do you get her tour dates coming to a town near you, not only do you get the podcast, nobody listens to Paula Poundstone, but she also has all these great exercise videos. And exercise produces natural serotonin, natural endorphins, natural dopamine. And so she, Paula's like a self-help person. She doesn't call herself one, but she's kind of like a self-help <laughs> guru. And she's also on Twitter. And the other thing you got to do, well, if you're – overwhelmed with the digital world, take a media break. You know, that's why I started doing a podcast. I'm not watching anything else. I'm watching me. That's all I'm watching. There you go. Me. Oh, that's, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. That, I, that, I, I, and nobody listens to Paula. That's right. Nobody listens to Paula Poundstone. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was great talking with you, Tingle. Thank you for joining us today. This has been a humor for humanity production. I am the founder of Humor for Humanity, a social enterprise that raises spirits, funds, and awareness for nonprofits, charities, and social causes. You can find out how we can help you or your organization raise spirits, funds, and awareness for you and yours. Our mission is your mission, Humor for Humanity at jimmytingle.com. Thank you.